You finally got into medical school. Four years stand between you and your MD. But what actually happens during those four years? Dr. Jubal, MedSchoolInsiders.com Most pre-meds have no idea what they're signing up for. They know medical school is hard, but they don't know how each year will test them differently, when the stress peaks, or which year will be the best and worst of their lives. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to expect during each year of medical school, from the radical adjustment of first year to the chaos of match day in fourth year. First year will be the most radical transition of your life. Gone are the days of college freedom. Now the rigors of medical school begin. The first few weeks are brutal. Everything is new, new study demands, new pace, new pressure. But here's the surprising part. Once you adjust, first year offers the most free time you'll have in all of medical school. This is your year to figure out your study strategies, find your routines, optimize efficiency and effectiveness, and build your group of friends. It's also the time to figure out whether those friends are people you can actually study with. Sometimes your closest friends are more distracting than motivating. You'll remember the middle and end of first year as some of the best times in medical school. The stress is comparatively low, you have more free time, and you're bonding with people who could become lifelong friends. The courses are intense, from anatomy to various organ systems physiology, but they're the foundation for everything that follows. Master them now because you'll need this knowledge for step one and beyond. Second year is when the intensity increases, and it all builds toward one critical exam, USMLE Step 1. Step 1 is now pass-fail, which means you just need to pass, but don't underestimate it. Residency programs may not see your Step 1 score, but they will know if you failed. Don't risk failing Step 1 simply because you think it'll be easy. USMLE Step 1 is also the foundation for USMLE Step 2 CK which is the most crucial exam of your medical career, and that occurs at the end or after third year. More on that coming up. Step 1 tests the culmination of your entire first two years. All the basic sciences, pathology, pharmacology, and foundational medical knowledge you've been learning. Your study approach has two stages. The lead-up period during regular coursework, where you reinforce concepts using resources like Anki and UWorld, and the dedicated period when you go all out. Of course, aim to pass Step 1 on your first first attempt to keep yourself on track, keep residency options open, and establish the foundation that you will build on for step 2 in third year. Remember, step 1 lays a foundation on which your knowledge for clinical shelf exams and USMLE step 2 CK will build. If you have a stronger foundation on step 1, you're much more likely to perform better on shelf exams and step 2. MS2 is also when you should start thinking about which specialty you want to pursue. While you don't need to make your final decision until end of third year, when you begin applying to away rotations that will occur at the beginning of fourth year, the sooner you start researching and determining what specialty you want, the better. The specialty you choose determines everything, from the step two scores you'll need, to how much research to pursue, to whether you need to shoot for honor society status. Check out specialtyquiz.com to discover which specialties align with your interests and strengths. Third year brings the clinical reality check. Most students love it, some students hate it, but it's an adjustment for everyone. MS3 marks the beginning of your clinical years. While the first two years focused on classroom learning, called the preclinical years, the latter two are primarily spent in hospitals and clinics. This is what you came to medical school for, to take care of actual patients. Clinical rotations are particularly challenging because you're not just studying books and taking tests anymore. Most of your waking hours are spent in the hospital or clinic, and your evaluations from residents and attendings hold tremendous weight in your overall grade. It's a different game entirely. Third year is when you figure out what kind of doctor you want to be. You'll discover which specialties energize you and which which ones drain you. Every medical student must complete core rotations like internal medicine, family medicine, general surgery, psychiatry, neurology, pediatrics, and OB-GYN. Each rotation typically lasts four to eight weeks. Your clinical hours are long and start very early. You're presenting patients, writing notes, and trying to impress evaluators while simultaneously studying for shelf exams. Shelf exams are taken at the end of each block, and you can think of them as excerpts from, or miniature versions of, Step 2 CK exams, which are focused on just your rotation. If you combined all of your shelf exams together, you'd essentially get a Step 2 CK exam. And here's the added challenge. 
you're also preparing for USMLE Step 2 CK, which has become the single most crucial standardized test score for matching into residency. Programs use Step 2 CK as the primary objective metric to screen and compare thousands of applicants. Top specialties like dermatology and orthopedic surgery now average Step 2 scores of 257. Students take Step 2 CK at the end of third year or early fourth year, but third year doesn't just end with Step 2. It's also when you start preparing your residency application. While you won't submit until September of fourth year, the groundwork begins now, securing letters of recommendation, drafting your personal statement, and finalizing your application materials. Balancing clinical rotations, shelf exams, evaluations, and Step 2 CK preparation makes third year one of the most demanding years of medical school. Also keep in mind that between third and fourth year, some students choose to take a gap year in order to focus on research, especially if they're interested in highly competitive specialties, which have ballooned in research expectations. You can see the full list of all specialties and their average number of research items from present day all the way back to 2014 at specialtyrank.com. I guarantee you'll be surprised at how much it's increased over the last handful of years. Finally, you've made it to fourth year, the light at the end of the tunnel. But hold on. While everyone says fourth year is smooth sailing, that's only partially true. The first half of fourth year is arguably the most challenging part of the entire medical training process, especially if you're going into a competitive specialty. Two things make it brutal, sub-internships and your residency application. Sub-internships, also called audition rotations, are fourth year rotations in your specialty of interest that you perform at either your home institution or at other institutions anywhere in the country. Most students will perform a few audition rotations early in fourth year. When they're not at your home institution, they're called away rotations. You're essentially performing a month-long interview and doing your best trying to perform like an intern, meaning a first year resident. You you have to be on your best behavior every single day and try to add value to your team. Medical students apply to residency through ERAS, the Electronic Residency Application Service. The application typically opens around September 15th and includes your personal statement, letters of recommendation, and a curated experiences section. In many ways, it mirrors your medical school application. Some specialties also require a supplemental application, which is similar to secondaries in med school, except this time there's one standardized set of questions per specialty rather than individualized prompts for every single program. Interview season runs from October to February. You'll need to meet with programs across the country to determine where you want to spend the next three to seven years of your life. At the end of February, you submit your rank list. You don't get accepted by programs in the traditional sense. Instead, both applicants and programs submit rank lists. An algorithm runs, and a month later, around mid-March, is match day. We covered how the match algorithm works Works and what to expect on Match Day in previous videos linked in the description. Match Day is one of the most intense experiences in medicine. You open your envelope with the rest of your classmates during a grand ceremony. Inside is the program you'll be training with for the next three to seven years of your life. Your fate is sealed. After the match, it's smooth sailing. Residency starts July 1st. Between match and starting residency, most students travel or spend time with loved ones because residency is going to be a rough ride. If you're currently applying to medical school, check out our ultimate blueprint for getting accepted right up here.